much for joining me today on our Lifting Others interview. Um, I would like to just jump into the questions, but let's first hear who is Margaret and how she got into the industry. Hi, Danielle. Thank you for inviting me to chat with you. Um, well, you can hear that I have a, a US twang because I am in the United States. I have lived here for 30 years. I am an unintentional immigrant. I left um, to travel the world a little bit more. I had done so after uh, graduating from Cape Technicom in communications and public relations. And I had uh, backpacked for two years, went back to Cape Town, and I was the, um, I worked in journalism, I worked for, uh, in import export for the um, SAFTO, South African Foreign Trade Organization. And then uh, finally, I was publicist for Bertie Reed, who is a, um, a lot of people will know, is a, a competitive uh, yacht racer. So I was with him through the Grinnecker campaign. And um, that was very exciting. It was a wonderful time. And uh, it was great to see him, you know, launch this amazing boat and all the excitement around that. Anyway, so then after that was completed, I traveled again and ended up marrying an American. And so my time here in the United States has been primarily uh, raising a family and uh, I, more recently, probably in the last three, four years, I've tried to jump back into public relations and writing and blogging, and that's more where my heart is. I volunteered with um, a very large Facebook group uh, out of South Africa of 1.2 million, and I was the head content and uh, edit head of the team for content and editing. So I had a team of about eight or nine writers under me working uh, on articles and, and uh, information for their website. And uh, I've been trying to get my own freelance business up and running. In the meantime, I do have to have a job that pays the, the rent, as it were. And, um, you know, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I just, I enjoy communicating. I love networking with people. I love working with younger people and helping them get uh, established and finding their way. And so... Um, you know, that kind of brought me into contact with other people in the US who have a love of Africa and all things um, South Africa and are supporters and advocates and ambassadors for South Africa um, here in the United States and trying to promote uh, investment, trying to promote um, knowledge and understanding of South Africa um, here in the US. Amazing. Amazing intro. Thank you so much, Margaret. And my, my next question for you, Margaret, would be you nomin you submitted a nomination for Robin and Stella Mountain. A very, very nice people. But tell me, why did you nominate them? I nominated Robin and Stella because we had a kindred spirit in our love of South Africa and Africa and trying to promote um interest and caring and giving back to our homeland. Um, I have been following them on Facebook for several years and I kind of watched their journey of uh, starting a coffee shop, starting their tour it, a company, and then buying the little online business that they have. And I saw in them a desire really to not only nurture understanding about Africa, but also to bring others along with them in um, promoting and, and establishing small businesses. So they have done very well as small business people here in the US. They have been the epitome for me, and I've just finished writing an article about them uh, for South African women's magazine here in the US. And I think what struck me, because we've become friends as well, and what struck me was the tenacity and the grit and the determination and true, honestly, South Africans to me are the epitome of entrepreneurship. And Stella and Robin, uh, they encapsulate all of those qualities. And um, so I have watched them not only grow their businesses, but also encourage people around them to, to jump into it. They're now going into franchising. So they are trying to help other South Africans uh, also promote Africa, but also become entrepreneurs like themselves. And to me personally, they have been a huge encouragement in my journey of uh, becoming a freelancer, following my dreams. And so I, I have watched their example of doing that. And that's why I nominated them. 
Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Margaret. Um, my last question, my last question for you is, is there anything that you are working on with them currently or something on your own that you would like to start or initiative you would get involved in? Um, I am working with them, uh, helping them with their website. I've done a little bit of blog writing for them, I really just behind the scenes, helping them uh, with their messaging and promoting their brand and just trying to kind of streamline their brand. And um, also, you know, I'd be, I'm thrilled. I'll, I hopefully, if, you know, travel things, <laughs> travel opens up and does okay and stays okay, um, to go out uh, at the end of June to Zimbabwe and to Zambia with Robin, where I will be doing a lot of writing and social media content for them. And, um, you know, their initiative, I don't know if they spoke to you about Zebra. Um, I'll be taking a suitcase out of women's bras. Um, they had like over 3,000 bras, I understood. And uh, so I will take an extra suitcase of that. And to me, that's a wonderful initiative. Uh, I think that really, again, going back to the whole concept of helping the world understand South Africa's journey and because there's such a large population of, of immigrants here in the US from South Africa, bringing people together, and that is very much their mission and that I also resonate with uh, tremendously, bringing South Africans together to, to talk about Africa and also to support one another because immigration is not easy. Uh, it's a very lonely experience. And so I have been very involved with um, several groups, Facebook groups and in, um, in the US of, of people who have immigrated and just trying to support, you know, for instance, tomorrow I'll be meeting a young family. They just want to meet another South African and um, with their kids and just hang out. And um, that connection is really important. So for me going forward, it would be uh, to be continuing to network with South Africans and to, to promote positive messages about South Africa. Yes, there's a lot of problems, but I know too that there are a lot of uh, NPO, NGO, grassroots um, organizations that are doing wonderful, wonderful work over there. And I will do everything that I can to promote them here in the US and to, and to um, you know, get funding to help encourage them. I work with a lot of Zimbabwean artists to help promote their work. Um, so it's, it's never ending. Um, we leave Africa physically, we will never leave it in our hearts and our souls. So that's really my foundation of where I live day to day is how can I help um, Africa and South Africa. Hi, Robin and Stella. Thank you so much for joining me today on our Lifting Others interview. Um, so you guys were nominated for being super lifters by Maggie Miller. But firstly, I would like to know who is Robin Mountain and Stella Mountain? Could you like, would you like to tell me more about yourselves? Right. Okay. I'm, I'm Robin Mountain, um, fifth generation South African, um, immigrated to America 21 years ago. And in fact, uh, my family come from Muscle Bay. And the, the big white angel standing in the graveyard in Muscle Bay, unfortunately, with one of the hands broken off, is where Omar Khriki and Omar and other, all the other Omars are lying as well. So, um, you know, we, we, are, we are South Africans who are proudly, proudly, proudly um, here in America representing South Africa. Um, we have, as you can see behind me, we have a little, we have a coffee shop here in Louisville, Kentucky, where we have a, a, a Spaza store. We've got a, a real Spaza shop. Um, uh, uh, the, the company that we have is called Ntaba Taste of Africa. And most importantly is Ntaba African Safaris. We started this in 2005, uh, simply taking people to South Africa. Our first, our first group that we ever took over were 30 beekeepers, because that's what I came over here. I specialize in artificial insemination of honey queen bees. And that's what I came over to do in California. And um, as I said, we started the, the safari company in 2005. We survived COVID. We, I'm so excited. I'm bringing three groups to South Africa um, in, in June, um, two groups of travel agents and then a group of clients. So 
again, it's a, you know, we've survived, we're there, we're doing everything we can to promote South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm Stella Mountain. I grew up in Natal, KwaZulu Natal. Um, I grew up on a farm, went to Hermansburg School, and um, yeah, and through and through South African, said a four and six generations. So we are, have been there for many years. Um, my mother tongue is actually German because there are so many German um, people in that area in the Natal Midlands. And yeah, so we met Robert and I was working in Irene uh, in Pretoria when we met um, many years ago, got married, and that's about it, you know, and Robin has told you the rest. Thank you so much. You definitely did. Um, very, very nice backstory. Thank you, guys. My, my second question would be, um, Maggie Miller nominated you guys. Um, she is working with you guys currently. On what initiatives did you guys work on? Now, Maggie Miller is an amazing South African. She, she actually came down via um, Zimbabwe or Rhodesia in those days. Her dad owned a couple of tea, tea rooms in Fishhook. And I'm going to say I walked together with her on the beach. I must have. <laughs> um, because my uncle and my grandmother lived in Fishhook. So I've spent many, many holidays in Fishhook. Um, Maggie is a tremendous, tremendous asset to South Africa. During uh, At the beginning of COVID, um, she was really like, what can we do? And Maggie, and another lady I want to mention is Margot Middle. Um, she, she had a lot to do with Kurt Constantia wine at, at one stage. Um, but, but as I say, Maggie um, worked, um, in fact, Maggie's joining me to, to Zimbabwe, in, uh, to Victoria Falls in June. And um, she's, going to be doing, she's going to be doing a lot of blogging, a lot of writing. Maggie writes some of our blogs for us now. But as I say, I'm, I'm tremendously honored to be, or we are tremendously honored to be nominated by, by Maggie. In fact, I should have nominated Maggie. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, at my, I want to slip this question in. Uh, is it, was there any other initiatives or projects that you guys worked um, with or for in where you are currently for South Africa? One, one big thing is Zabra, Z-A-B-R-A, and, and it's Paul Kruger's great, great, great granddaughter. And I love it that I don't have to explain to you what Kruger National Park is. Here in America, it takes a lot to explain that. But what we do is we basically collect bras, and I do, I have bras sent to me from all over. I picked up a box of bras. It's, a, it's like a coffin, a thousand bras in it. And it's, 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 a, it's because when we travel to Africa, we like to take two suitcases or when we travel internationally. So, and, or except when you travel on, on first class, you take four. But I, I always say, you know, this is your suitcase and whose is that? And um, we bless so many people. And one thing that really, really touched my heart was um, in Langa, um, we, we, we delivered some bras. And, and in fact, they, they asked me to come to the, to the place that we went to. Beautiful little orphan girl comes to me, beautiful little brown skin girl, just gives me a handwritten note. And you know what us guys are like, you put it in our top pocket and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, that evening I got to my car and honestly the sun setting over Table Mountain and I pulled, it, I pulled that note out and I did the most manly thing I could. Eh? I just cried, I cried because I've got a wife, I've got a mother, I've got a daughter. And that little note simply said, thank you, sir. Now I can go for a job interview. And you know that you know maybe that that young lady goes on to become the minister of tourism and one day says, "Do you know why? Do you know my first job interview?" <laughs> but it's just it's a tremendous thing. I mean, you know the rape crisis centres, the women's shelters, and and the orphanages. We've given bras out as far as as Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia, um, um, Eth um, Kigali, and, and it's just it's, it's an amazing it's amazing gift that just warms the heart. Uh, Stella, do you like to uh, add anything on? Yes, that, I think that is the biggest initiative that we are involved in is a Zebra. But I know also that why we are connecting with uh, Maggie as well, we actually sell um, uh, artwork in the coffee house as well. And so there are, we, we've got something from Zambia. A, co a company who import things from Zambia. So, and and I know that Maggie has got a lot of connect connection in Zimbabwe. 
and she yeah. is really trying to get the Zimbabwe artwork over here for us to sell. So that is how we really are connecting, is to try and promote Africa. Um, we know that, that we are a funnel here to Africa, to promote Africa, to um, give back to Africa, because we are Africans. I don't think that will ever get out of us. In spite of living here in America and having dual citizenship, we still feel African. We are African. And that's it. Um, and so we have just got a heart of wanting to go and give back and bless as much as we can. And then another thing is Intaba, Intaba Coffee House. Intaba is, is most our, our, our surname in Zulu. It means mountain. And um, we, we're importing coffee only from Africa because coffee is endemic to Africa. So, you know, one of the things I love to tell people, and I have people tell me, is every cup of coffee you drink here, you're helping a kid in East Africa go to school. And I mean, our coffee is from Ethiopia all the way down to Zambia. And, um, you know, our brothers stretch from Cape Town to Cairo, get over it. <laughs> and, you know, whatever we can do. And we, we, we as I said, we've survived the, the pandemic, in, in, you know, business-wise. And um, we, have, we, we are blessing people all the time. We're actually in the process of franchising our, our, our coffee shop. And there are many South Africans here. There's somebody up in Chicago right now who wants to build an entire coffee shop. And it thrills me because I just see those little freakies running to school in Kigali, in Burundi, <laughs> in Uganda. <laughs> it's amazing work that you guys do. It really is sure. keeping the spirit alive in America. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's true. Thank you so much for being super lifters on the other side of South Africa. We really appreciate your help, your support and everything that you do.